Hi everyone, my name is Milan Anand and I'm the co-president of the Columbia Space Initiative, a community of students passionate about pursuing the final frontier that is space. We are a group of over 80 space fanatics and as you just saw, we have a lot to be proud of, from launching rockets to building asteroid sampling devices and even launching a, a stuffed animal version of Columbia's mascot Rory to 80,000 feet in a high altitude balloon. We have seven technical missions catering to all interested students on campus, and our teams travel to NASA at Houston, Cape Canaveral, and Langley every year to compete and test prototypes. But the Columbia Space Initiative isn't just an engineering club. We seek to spread our passion for space within and outside of the Columbia community. We have brought speakers like Moonwalker Charlie Duke and record-holding astronaut Peggy Whitson to campus. Beyond our campus, we have been a three-time partner with the Intrepid Museum for their Kids Week event, teaching hundreds of students about space exploration and technology. We have also been involved in volunteer teaching in underserved public middle schools around New York City and uh, much, much more. All of us at the Columbia Space Initiative are excited for what we see as a very bright future for the commercial space industry, and we can't wait to make that future a reality. We don't want to just make an impact on our world. We want to see what lies beyond it. For that reason, I'm excited to announce a new project that the Columbia Space Initiative is working on, launching a payload on a Blue Origin New Shepard uh, suborbital flight that will experience three minutes of microgravity. We are a passionate group of engineers, streamers, and stargazers, and I want to thank all of you for your support uh, in allowing each and every one of us to follow our passion. With that, I would like to introduce the moderator of today's commercial space panel, Sydney Nakahoto. Sydney is one of the leaders of the New Space Movement and the co-founder and CEO of the New York Space Alliance. He's a former fellow of Singularity University and is also an alumnus, visiting scholar, and a member of the faculty at Columbia. Sydney. Thank you, Milan. Good morning, space generation. So let's gauge the interest and the temperature of the room with the most polarizing question. If you are a fan of uh, Star Wars, clap your hands. If you're a fan of Star Trek, clap your hands even harder. OK, I think the question was a little bit biased. right? Today we're here to talk about something that's cool and sounds like science fiction, and whose rapid development makes it equally exciting. For the most part of our brief space history, governments have taken the front seat at leading humanity to the final frontier exploration. NASA, in particular, has played a key role in such endeavors, from the Apollo 11 moon landing mission to the construction of the International Space Station. However, in recent years, we have seen the emergence of the so-called new space movement, led by successful entrepreneurs such as Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and Richard Branson. Commercial space activities have been rapidly transforming space explorations in ways that we could never have anticipated just a decade ago. In order to discuss the challenges and opportunities for space entrepreneurs and startups, I would like to introduce our distinguished speakers. Will Porters, on the left, is a general partner with the RRE Ventures, a leading venture capital firm. He also serves as the firm's chief operating officer. He's currently on the board of many space startups, and he's a faculty member of Columbia Business School and the chairman of the Dockery Farms Foundation, which he founded. Sanam Fatima is an investment manager at Lockheed Martin Ventures, the corporate venture arm at uh, Lockheed Martin. Her focus areas include advanced AI, autonomy technology, next gen, manufacturing and materials, and IoT. Previously, Sena worked at the World Bank, the European VC firm Atomico, and Goldman Sachs. Last but not least, someone that uh, you probably don't know, but is probably also the most popular faculty here on campus. Not only because he's a former astronaut and professor here at the Mechanical Engineering at Columbia University, but because he's the first person to ever tweet from space to have appeared in a Big Bang Theory, and also because he's the author of Space Man, an astronaut's unlikely journey to unlock the secrets of the universe, Professor Mike Massimino. So let's give a round of applause to our speakers. Let's start with an icebreaker uh, before we go into the questions for this particular panel. If each one of you could mention one book 
or movie that has inspired you and it's related to space and why don't we start with Will? Um, I was a Doctor Who obsessed kid from like the age 11. So, it, you know, the whole notion of space, space time travel kind of, that, that was a huge part of my childhood and upbringing and, and my, I, I realized sadly that my kids have the gene too now, so apparently this stuff is inherited. I can't remember who wrote the book, but I'm sure the book is pretty familiar to most of this crowd. October Sky, Rocket Boys. Uh, yes. <laughs> and I think maybe that's what started it off for me. Um, the precipice for this was that I was planning on moving to Huntsville, Alabama, and was thinking about the scene and what that meant and what that meant for a scientist, and, and yeah. That, that, that's pretty, it's an easy one for me to answer because it's, uh, it's the right stuff. And uh, I th it, was a, it was a cool movie, but it also, was in, 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 it changed my life. I, I, I watched, I'm old enough to remember people walking on the moon. I was six years old and I saw a Neil Armstrong do that and it made me dream about being an astronaut. But then by the time I was eight years old, I figured that's impossible, I, I can't do that. And I was a junior, I was a senior here at Columbia when that movie came out, when the right stuff came out. And I went to see that movie and it rekindled my interest in the space program. Uh, seeing the camaraderie between those astronauts and what they would you know, their, their sense of purpose of what they were doing and just how cool they looked up on the big stage, you know, the breaking of the sound barrier and the first flights of the Mercury program. Uh, and I immediately got the book and read that. I've seen that movie about, I don't know, 500 times. I can quote every line from it. I quoted the lines that they use inside of the spacecraft when I was on the launch pad, you know, it was, uh, yeah, it was just a, just a, 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 I flew it in space with me as well. I have a copy of the movie. So yeah, that, so that's my, that's my favorite movie is The Right Stuff. Okay, that's a good hint, right? If you want to become an astronaut and Columbia faculty, start with The Right Stuff. 